Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford. This last past summer, gas prices in the US hit a record high at $5 per gallon. And here in my home state of California, it was well over $6. It's ridiculous. In a basic economics class, you draw shifts in supply and demand to show changes to equilibrium. This graph has only one equilibrium price and usually only show one shift, but let's look at economics in real life. Obviously, there's no one equilibrium price for gasoline. Gas prices differ from station to station based on their location and competition. So when economists are talking about the equilibrium price of gas, they're looking at averages and ignoring the local factors that might cause the price to be slightly higher or slightly lower. One of the biggest misconceptions is that gas stations themselves are charging higher prices and raking in massive profit. Because of competition, gas stations have very little control over the price of gas. If one station significantly increases their price, customers will just go to the other gas station right down the street. So gas stations don't make that much profit off gas. In fact, they make more profit inside their store from selling food and drinks. Yes, they earn more profit per gallon from selling soda than they do from selling gas. The point of all this is that gas stations are not to blame for higher gas prices. The three main factors affecting the price of gas are the price of crude oil, the refinery process, and federal and state taxes. And this helps explain why gas prices are higher in some states than others. California has higher taxes and fewer refineries, so they have higher gas prices. Okay, but why over the last three years have gas prices fallen, then gone back up, then spiked, and now they're kind of falling? You know the answer, it's all just supply and demand. But it's not just one factor causing one shift, it's a bunch of different things causing a bunch of different shifts. In 2019, gas prices in the US were around $2.50. When COVID first hit and the economy shut down, the demand for gas plummeted and the price for gas fell. We don't know how long stores will be shut down, how long travel will be paused. But eventually things started to open back up and people went back to work and the demand slowly increased. But COVID created a new problem. Fearing a prolonged recession, many oil companies stopped drilling and closed down their rigs. This, along with the closure of several old refineries that didn't open back up, decreased the supply of gas and led to higher prices. So gas prices ended up a little higher than they were before the pandemic, but right here in the beginning of 2022, they spiked. So what caused the price to go up? It was unprovoked. But this is what Russian President Vladimir Putin unleashed on Ukraine. After the invasion, many countries, including the U.S., stopped doing business with Russia. So the world supply of oil decreased, increasing the cost of gas and decreasing the supply. So with less supply and an increase in demand by summer vacationers, the price of gas skyrocketed and hit record numbers this last summer. Prices are not going to come down uh in the next few months. I mean, summer driving season, you only see an increase in demand. But now it looks like prices are going down and supply and demand can explain that too. Worldwide oil drilling has increased and the US released oil from a strategic petroleum reserve. That has decreased the price of oil and increased the supply of gas. The point of all this is to show you that in the textbook, one curve shifts at one time, but in real life, Prices are always constantly changing based on changes in the market. But all that doesn't actually solve the problem. We still have high gas prices, so what should we do? It's very expensive. It's like an extra $200 a month just for my car. Well, you know economics, so you know what we shouldn't do. A price ceiling or a cap on gas is not gonna work, and taxing gas stations or refineries or oil companies is probably not a good idea. The reality is that Americans have a love-hate relationship with gasoline. Yes, in the short run, we all want more gas and lower gas prices. But in the long run, many Americans are pushing to completely get rid of gas and other fossil fuels. The push for green energy means that oil and gas companies have less incentive to invest in long-term projects. Trying to strike a balance between boosting the economy while also cutting oil and gas use because of its impact on climate change. So if you're an environmentalist, you actually want higher gas prices. It will encourage consumers to buy more fuel efficient or electric cars and incentivize green energy companies to invest more. But is that actually gonna happen? If it does, I'll make another video. So be sure to like and subscribe. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're a teacher, take a look at the worksheet that goes along with this video. If you're a student, take a look at the Ultimate Review Pack. It has tons of practice to help you in your AP or your college level econ class. Thanks for watching. Till next time.